So I know we're kind of running a week behind on this one. This is our random roll overview for all the weapons dropping this season, including the exotics. Huge reason why we're running a week behind is because the raid weapons just got dropped. So we can finally take a look at all the rolls here, which let me just say they are absolutely juicy. Now, before we get into our legendaries, let's take a quick look at our exotics, starting with Quicksilver Storm. This is actually a kinetic auto rifle and is the pre-order exotic for Lightfall. Many of you bought Lightfall, you get access to this exotic immediately. It's a 720 round per minute auto. It comes with the intrinsic perk rocket tracers. We're landing multiple hits turns your next shot into a homing micro rocket and landing multiple rockets loads a grenade. You can then click over your alternate weapon action to switch into grenade launcher mode. Pretty sure this weapon got disabled or is in the process of being disabled or maybe re-enabled. If you haven't noticed by now, grenade launchers are doing more damage than intended. However, we will be doing a review on this weapon once everything gets worked out because it's stated that this weapon is doing more or less damage in certain places inside of Destiny. So I'm kind of waiting for the bugs to get worked out there before we get a review on it. Next is Touch of Malice. This is the raid exotic. It is a scout rifle. It's a 260 round per minute scout at that. And it is a fantastic weapon, guys. We've actually already reviewed it, but we have so many builds in mind for this exotic. It comes with the perk Touch of Malice, where the final round of the magazine deals bonus damage, drawing from the wielder's life force, and then regenerates itself. Rapidly defeating three targets restores health. Now, pretty good, but Bungie actually went a step further and gave it charge with Blight. Clever name choice there, Bungie. But Precision Hits Drain Combines Life Force and charges up a Ball of Darkness, which through an alternate weapon action, you can then fire to unleash the Blight Projectile, shrouding Combines in Darkness and temporarily blinding them. Now, not only does it actually blind them and do extra damage, but it actually applies a massive debuff with that Blight, specifically for your Touch of Malice to do increased damage. Really, really good weapon, guys. Again, feel free to check out a review on this exotic. Moving on, we have Delicate Tomb. This is the seasonal exotic. We recently reviewed it as well with the exotic catalyst and a warlock build a very good fusion rifle i know it's got terrible reviews especially inside of pvp it's not really a pvp fusion definitely more of a pve fusion considering it's horizontal burst which is actually the exotic trait here traitor's vessel fires a wide horizontal spread when shot from the hip final blows of this weapon have a chance to generate ionic traces powerful foes and opposing guardians always generate ionic traces it also comes with the trait tempest cascade collecting an ionic trace overcharges this weapon's next shot jolting targets on hit you can imagine how good this fusion rifle is with arc 3.0 considering there's so many fragments and aspects that synergize with ionic traces all of this which delicate tomb is able to take advantage of and on top of that it has an exotic catalyst that allows the weapon to partially reload the magazine from reserves when collecting an ionic trace very very good and by the way touch of malice i forgot to even mention its exotic catalyst that one's actually rapid hit now with our exotics out of the way let's move into our raid weapons starting with smite of moraine this is a kinetic pulse rifle in the adaptive frame archetype shooting at 390 rounds per minute. And with all of these raid weapons, they come with the origin trait, runneth over. We're reloading their allies, overflows the magazine. This is a very good trait, guys. And you're gonna see some of the synergy here, especially when we get to like the fusion rifle, how good this origin trait actually is. Now with all of these raid weapons, they are craftable. You get red box versions of these weapons as you do the raid. And upon getting five of them, you can then break them down and obtain the weapon pattern. We're looking into Smite of Moraine here as a 390. It's not necessarily the most meta archetype inside of PvP. So I am going to be looking at this more for PvE. That's not to say it can't work inside of PvP. I'm just letting you know in terms of its base archetype, not really its strong suit, right? But right off the bat, we have things like One for All, Stats for All, Vorpals on this thing. But notice this combination right here, which is very interesting. Focus Fury is in that first trait column. Focus Fury is not necessarily a meta perk. But what's so beautiful about this is that it does grant a 20% increase in damage for 11 seconds after landing 50% of your magazine as precision hits. Combine that with the likes of any of these damage perks, whether it's One For All, Adrenaline Junkie, Swashbuckler, it really doesn't matter. That damage will stack. And this is something that Bungie has leaned away from for quite some time since like Black Armory. That's kind of what made Kindle Orchid so nasty. It can roll with things like Rampage and Kill Clip together and think of like Transfiguration, same concept. But Bungie said a long time ago they wanted to lean away from damage perks having the possibility of stacking until now. That Focus Fury roll alongside pretty much any of the damage perks there is really nice. Now, there's also a new trait here called Gut Shot Straight. Aiming down sights increases body shot damage, but it decreases target acquisition. Now, this trait actually allows for things like 140s to two crit in one body. I haven't seen it or even tried it out inside a PvP on a 390 pulse, but it does interest me as this could actually allow the weapon to have a lot more forgiveness, which even though 390s aren't necessarily meta, one thing they do have going for them is their forgiveness. You give them even more forgiveness. Oh, Smite of Moraine might actually be a play. But for PvE, guys, 
hands down. That Focus Fury roll with any of these damage perks is very nice. Moving on to our next raid weapon, Defiance of Yasmin. This is one of the most popular snipers inside of Destiny 1. It too comes with a runneth over origin trait, but there is a lot of things on this sniper rifle that's good for both PvE and for PvP. It's present in that kinetic slot, so it's doing more damage inside of PvE, and you can get things like Firing Line and Shoot to Loot on it, which by the way, don't knock Shoot to Loot. I can't tell you how many times I've been cheesing Nightfalls where I wanted a Shoot to Loot weapon. You need at least one. And here on a sniper rifle, that could be very, very nice. You also have Ensemble, which you can pair with things like Firing Line, maybe a Mag perk on top of that. Granted, it's no triple tap or four times the charm, but still good. Inside of PvP though, we have Snapshot Opening Shot, which seems like an obvious one. And then the other role that's really, really good is of course, Moving Target Snapshot. And I know there has been some people leaning away from Snapshot inside of PvP and say you're handling this fast enough on this weapon and you're rocking targeting perks, maybe even doubling up on targeting perks. You may be able to rock things like No Distractions, Moving Target Together, or even No Distractions Opening Shot. Now there is also a new trade here called Slick Draw, where it significantly increases handling, but significantly decreases target acquisition. Now, I do not know what the values are on this one. I've only seen the trade. I haven't exactly tested it. I am curious about it though. How much of a target acquisition drop are we talking here? Is this something that's going to affect one input more than the other? As in, is it going to affect controller players more than mouse and keyboard players? Again, testing is necessary here. Outside of that though, for PVE, I do think that firing line and ensemble is actually going to be a pretty good combination considering ensemble increases that reload when close to allies. And of course, you're going to have run it over. So you're going to get like a faster reload with like a clown cartridge effect from this sniper rifle. All around should be a fantastic sniper for both PVE and for PVP. Moving on to our next raid weapon is Minus Reckoning. This is a high impact fusion rifle, meaning it's slow, slow, slow. However, the good thing about high impacts, especially in PVE, is the amount of damage they do, more specifically when stacking it with damage perks like Reservoir Burst. This weapon also comes with Reservoir Burst. It's also a arc weapon. So again, synergizes with arc 3.0. It also comes with runneth over, which means when you reload and you go past that mag cap, every shot you shoot will be proccing Reservoir's Burst. Again, Reservoir Burst gives that 25% increase in damage and also causes your enemies to explode as long as it's the first shot of your magazine. However, runneth over overloads your weapon and therefore every shot is taking advantage of Reservoir Burst. Guys, that is a fantastic roll and you can combine it with things like fill prep, maybe even cornered. And I know we have golden tricorn here and even things like Vorpal or even success for warm up as well as surround it. Guys, there's other damage perks here. I just think that based on runneth over and what that origin trait has to offer, Reservoir Burst is the go-to choice. Now for PvP, considering how slow the charge rate is on this weapon, I think Kickstart is the obvious choice. And maybe even do like Kickstart, hit fire Grip. If you haven't tried it, it's actually pretty nice. You literally just run around, you sprint, you shoot. You don't even have to waste time aiming down sights. You're getting maximum damage there with Kickstart, which is like a 20% increase in damage on top of a drop of 100 milliseconds. It's a great trade. It just requires you to constantly be moving. The good thing about hip fire grip being paired with it is you can immediately shoot the weapon out without having to aim down sights. Again, I'm leaning more toward this weapon inside of PVE. Not saying it can't work inside of PVP, but there are other fusion rifles outside of this archetype that I really like inside of PVP. Now, moving on to the hand cannon, and I am doing everything in my power to get the crafted version of this weapon. This 140 round per minute hand cannon, which also deals solar damage, has a lot of good things going for it. Number one, you can roll explosive payload and incandescent on this weapon. You want a legendary version of Sunshot? There you go, fellas. That's literally Sunshot right there. For PvP, you can also rock Gut Shot, which allows this weapon to two crit one body inside of Crucible. This weapon also has a pretty nice magazine size, and you can rock things like Explosive Payload and Firefly, which essentially just replaces Fatebringer in a lot of ways. Granted, Fatebringer's still Bay, especially the time loss version. Hands down, the role that I want more than anything is that incandescent Explosive Payload role. That's the role. That's the one that I want. Now, inside of PvP, don't overlook this hand cannon. I think it's got a lot of play. Opening shot, Eye of the Storm. That one's looking really, really good for me. And if you don't want to rock Eye of the Storm, you can also rock Incandescent. Yes, even inside of PvP. That is, of course, if you don't want to try out Gut Shot straight. I think Gut Shot with Eye of the Storm, though, is a very good roll. And again, what you're trying to go for here with Zalo is, of course, that forgiveness. And it definitely has that. All around, great hand cannon, guys. Moving on to the Scout Rifle, Doom of Chelchis. And I hope I'm saying that right. It's a precision frame 180. And even though it's a 180, and I know most other 180s feel somewhat sluggish, this one feels really, really good. Already, you see the trait combinations that look juicy here, though. Explosive Payload, Frenzy, Firefly, Dragonfly. Like, what the hell? What are we doing here, man? What is this trait combination? I want this roll. Somebody, please, let me try that out. I just want to see what happens. Like, what happens? Like, two explosions? I need to know. You also have Repulsor Brace, which states that upon killing an enemy affected by a Void debuff, you'll be granted an overshield. So, again, some synergy there.
there with Void 3.0. And then some other common combinations like one for all, stats for all. You've got adaptive munitions here as well. For PvP, I don't really like 180s inside of PvP, but explosive payload, Eye of the Storm. That's a fantastic role for PvP. You want to talk about peppering opponents over and over? That'll do it. And considering this is a primary weapon, Warble will increase your damage by 20% against bosses, mini bosses, and vehicles, champs especially. Combine that with any of these damage perks. Guys, this is a very solid looking scout rifle. I want it. I want to try the different combinations on it. If you have that specific role that I'm looking for, that Firefly Dragonfly role, let me know, man. I just kind of want to know. Now, moving on to the machine gun. I think it's Quilms Terminus. Oh, I'm saying that right? This is a 360 round per minute machine gun in that high impact frame archetype. It also deals stasis damage. Now, a lot of great things on this one for PvE. Again, runneth over, right? Overflows the magazine when reloading. Combine that with the likes of Killing Tally. And then combine that with things like Stats for All or even Ensemble. But Stats for All is probably pretty easy to proc on this one as well, considering you're probably just spraying into a group of ads and you're increasing that reload speed as well as other stats. Killing Tally is really, really good, guys, especially for my solo players. But if you didn't want to rock that and say you wanted to go with an Ensemble firing line combination for PvE in team play, that can definitely work for you. Now, even though this is being looked at as a PvE weapon, guys, this is a very steady LMG. I've actually used it a number of times. It can be a PvP weapon too. Eye of the Storm, Firmly Planets, Eye of the Storm Heating Up, or even Dynamic Sway, Eye of the Storm. And if you want to be funky, bring Headstone. From personal experience, what I could say about this machine gun is that it sounds beautiful when you fire it. So those are our ray weapons. Now, with all of these ray weapons, there will be a Herald version of them, meaning there will be essentially an Adept version of them. I have no idea how Bungie's going to deal with this because the Adept versions don't have craftable roles. I know Bungie's talked about dealing with this, so normally the regular version of these ray weapons are better than the adept versions regardless though guys all of these raid weapons very solid across the board now moving on to our other random roles we have the whistler's whim this is a kinetic combat bow in that lightweight frame archetype by the way this entire archetype actually got a consistency buff this season now this is the trials of osiris bow and has a very similar model to that of like whispering slap now being a trials weapon it comes with of course the origin trait alacrity when you gain increased reload stability aim assist and range when you're the last living member of your fire team or running solo. This is a very good trait, guys. We're talking things like 20 reload, 20 stability, 10 aim assist, and 10 range. And it can proc in things like rumble and even procs in things like trials with Cyrus when you aren't the last member of your fire team. Now, it also has a secondary origin trait, one quiet moment, where it grants increased reload speed when out of combat. Now, the weapon rolls themselves. This was an interesting one because it also comes with gut shot straight, aiming out sights, increased body shot damage, but decreases target acquisition. I don't necessarily think this is going to be the go-to trait at all. For the most part, you want to land precision shots with your bow to then follow up with either a cleanup weapon. And hitting those precision shots in PvE and PvP obviously is substantially more damage, especially on a bow. Now, other roles on this thing include rapid hit and kill clip. Now, as far as I know, I don't know any other bow that can roll with kill clip. I'm pretty sure Whistler's Whim is the first one that can roll with kill clip. Now, kill clip with rapid hit is definitely a fantastic option. One's increasing reload speed, the other increasing damage. Top of that, Alacrity is contributing to all of this. So I can imagine this role being very, very good in solo content, maybe like solo lost sectors, etc. And again, this is a kinetic bow, so it's going to be dealing even more damage. And the thing that has plagued lightweight bows for so long is their inconsistency, right? Precisions have always felt better. I haven't actually played with lightweight bows this season, but they are supposed to be feeling a lot better on the same level or on par with that of precisions. Now, another combination that looks really good here is, of course, cornered and successful warm up. Now, I love successful warm up. Again, after getting that kill, you get a big drop in charge time, allowing for those follow-up shots to spit out very, very fast. Cornered also increases faster charge time when surrounded by combatants. Kind of a difficult thing to do here, considering that this is a bow and you're normally keeping your distance. It's a great combination in theory. However, I actually think successful warm-up and rapid hit would synergize very nicely. For PvP, though, you're not going to be able to get the one-shot crit with Whistler's Whim and Kill Clip. I wish we could, fellas. It's just not going to be enough damage. However, when we start to combine things like Radiant and Power Buffs with kill clip, then yes, you will be able to achieve that one hit crit. A lot of good things on this bow, fellas. And again, being a trials weapon, it also has an adept version of it, which means for this bow, we can rock things like adept draw time, which would literally drop our draw time to 540. Our next weapon on this list is malicious birthright. Ah, yes. The return of one of our favorite kinetic grenade launchers in the game. This weapon is a lightweight frame GL, and it's dropping from nightfalls this season, meaning it can come with origin traits like stunning recovery, where stunning a champion partially refills your magazine as well as Vanguard's Vindication. Be prepared to get a grenade launcher champion mod on our artifact next season. I'm predicting it now.
now. Now, the combinations on this one are pretty interesting. We have things like Grave Robber and Swashbuckler, Frenzy and Ambitious Assassin, but also Slimeways is present here, which is really nice. When you talk about combinations like Slimeways and One for All, you got One for All giving you a 35% damage buff for 10 seconds, and it's so easy to proc that on a GL because of its explosive grenades. It's hitting so many targets at once, and you're literally sliding every time to reload your Mac. Stack that with something like Spy Grenades, and you'll be doing some hefty damage. Now, we no longer have concussion grenades on GLs, but honestly, blinding grenades have always been the go-to option. And if I was to rock this inside a PvE, I would actually do something like blinding with steady hands, maybe, in combination with auto-loading holster. Or maybe blinding, lead from gold, auto-loading holster. Again, the purpose of that one would just be purely to blind enemies. And if I didn't do that, maybe blinding ambitious assassin, auto-loading holster. Something tells me ambitious assassin will not proc with auto-loading holster, meaning even if you get a kill, it won't overflow the magazine when you auto-reload with auto-loading holster. I'm pretty sure Ambitious Assassin requires a manual reload. Regardless though, blinding grenades being present, always a great option for just purely locking down ads and keeping them blinded, especially in things like GMs. All around the board, guys, this is a very good GL. One I used to use in the past. There will be an adept version of it as well. And if we get some more champion mods for GLs, this one's gonna be nasty. Our next weapon is a hand cannon called Pure Poetry. This is a 120 round per minute hand cannon. And yes, it is a hockey weapon, meaning it comes with the origin trait hockey breach armaments, where you gain 50% increase in damage against vehicles and constructs, as well as 30% increase in damage against turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. It's a very good trait, guys. You'll be surprised how often it actually procs. It also comes with Vanguard's Vindication, where you get seven health per kill with this weapon. Now, roll-wise in general, guys, dude, this is kind of a nightmare. There is so many traits on this weapon, but some of the new ones include Under Over, where you deal bonus damage to targets with Overshield. It also does a small amount of bonus damage to combatant shields. Not really sure if this is going to be a trait I'm going to spec for, but let's just see how much damage we're talking. For PvE though, roles that look good include Frenzy with Ambitious Assassin, Shoot the Loot is also present on this weapon, you also have Perpetual Motion, Multi-Kill Clip, Rampage, Ambitious Assassin, Four Times a Charm, Rampage, Swashbuckler, Grave Robber, a lot of good options inside of PvE. I think Frenzy is where I'm going to be at the most, especially something like Frenzy and Four Times a Charm, or even Frenzy, Ambitious Assassin, because you're going to want to reload. Frenzy, of course, increases that reload speed, so you're going to be procking Ambitious Assassin a bunch, and if you're grabbing a couple kills here and there, it's going to overflow that mag. Four times a charm, though, is good for just dealing damage on a thicker target. Granted, are you really going to be using your primary weapon? Not so much. I will say the mag size is not that great, sitting at eight, which I know is very similar to most 120s, but every little bullet counts. I'm still waiting for a 120 to have up to 10 rounds in a mag without a mag perk outside of Stern. And before somebody says, Cross, what about Warden's Law? Forget that weapon. It might as well never exist. It's literally the most forgotten archetype. Now, for PvP, what we try to achieve inside of PvP is the two-tap. Now, 120s can't two-tap with perks like Rampage. It's just not enough. But with things like multi-kill clip, you can't. Granted, it's still kind of a stretch and realistically only on like lower resilience guardians. But technically, yes, you can get the two-tap. However, I want to steer you away from that and actually lean you toward making this hand cannon feel more consistent and fluid. Things like perpetual motion combined with opening shots. That's going to feel really good on this hand cannon. To literally start off with that first shot landing that full damage crit in combination with the handling of buffs that you get from perpetual motion on top of the stability buffs that's the role that i'm going to be looking for and of course you could swap out opening shot for say eye of the storm which will help you on the back end personally though opening shot perpetual motion that's what i'm going to go for and i know somebody's going to bring up cross what about fragile focus and opening shot together do those stack they do is it necessary no and again the thing about fragile focus is that yeah it's a good buff when you don't take damage but the moment you take damage you lose that bump there in range so it's just like a wasted perk. And against good players, you're going to be taking damage. You will be in a duel. So use perks that can help you in those duels. Opening shot, Eye of the Storm, both of those will be very beneficial here. Outside of that, you do have Harmony. And if you want to follow up with Harmony, it is a 20% buff, which will be a guaranteed two tap for the most part against like mid five, six resilience guardians. Next, we have No Reprieve. This is a craftable weapon tied to Season of the Plunder. By the way, if you haven't checked out our guide on how to go through Season of the Plunder, feel free to check that one out. This weapon comes with its own own origin trait called right hook. Dealing damage with your melee gives this weapon increased target acquisition and range for a short period of time. Dealing damage again extends the effect. Now this is really good on a slug shotgun. There's so many melee based builds and honestly this kinetic slug is perfect for this when going for those range bumps and that increased target acquisition bumps. Now perk wise for PvP I like the idea of combining this with snapshots. A moderate barrel perk not like full board which can hurt your stability and handling. So 
So think of like hammer force rifling, but snapshot with surplus. And if not that, maybe snapshot and steady hands. If you want to get wild, you can do surplus and headstone. And if you want to really get crazy, considering you're going to be going in for the melee damage, or at least following up with a melee, you can do swashbuckler for that times five, combined with right hook in that origin trait when you get that melee kill, and do like steady hands or surplus. Either way it goes, this shotgun is positioned very nicely for PvP. I really don't know why the review is so badly on it on light GG, but it's looking pretty juicy. And if you want to lean even heavier into this weapon and that identity, you also have pugilists where final blows of this weapon generate melee energy and dealing melee damage briefly improves this weapon handling. So it's very obvious here the role that Bungie wants you to go for. They want you to go for that pugilist swashbuckler role in combination with right hook and that origin trait. It seems perfect. I know it's got a 3.6 rating on light GG, which is not good, but so far it seems perfect on paper. Now for PVE, obviously things like headstone and outlaw, triple tap can be thrown in there as well, or feeding frenzy. Focus Fury is an interesting one because it does offer a 20% damage buff. My question is, how does Focus Fury and Triple Tap interact with each other? I haven't actually tried it out. Somebody in the comments let me know how that works. Focus Fury, again, requires you to land 50% of your shots as precision shots in order to proc that damage buff, but it lasts for 11 seconds. I just want to make sure that Triple Tap doesn't break Focus Fury in any kind of way, or at least prolongs it or keeps you from attaining Focus Fury sooner. Technically, though, by the time Triple Tap actually procs, you're already 50% down into the mag itself. So therefore, Focus Fury should be procced. Granted though, against bosses, I think a lot of us would just prefer Vorpal. It's only a 15% damage buff, but it's for every single bullet. Either way it goes, a lot of cool creative stuff on this shotgun. We're definitely going to be trying it out soon. Moving on, we have Allied Demand. This is a Iron Banner sidearm, which means it comes with the Skulking Wolf origin traits. Now, Skulking has actually been buffed, where it stays at while at low health. Guardian final blows of this weapon grant enhanced radar and remove you from opposing radar. This works in all of Crucible. It's not just tied to Iron Banner. Now, this weapon also comes with that under over trait where it deals bonus damage to targets with over shields and deals a small amount of bonus damage to combatant shields. Definitely need to try that out. But the big one, the one that I'm like, oh my God, did they actually do it? Range Finder and Iron Reach together. Guys, this is an adaptive frame sidearm. And when you think of sidearms that are really, really good, Drain is like the first one that comes to mind. And it too is an adaptive sidearm. Allied Demand here will have the ability to roll perfect range. Even if you were to do something like Hammer Forge with Range Finder and Iron Reach and say have a range masterwork, you are reaching almost all the way up to 84 range. That's crazy. Now, the weapon also comes with Gut Shot Straights, where aiming out sights increases body shot damage, but of course decreases target acquisition. The thing about that, though, is it may be worth it because target acquisition on sidearms is already very manageable. Now, most adaptives sit around a 0.6 second time to kill value, which is fast, but it does require four crits. Is this enough damage to allow you to get the three crit one body? I don't think so, but if it can't, that would be quite nasty. Next, we have the Budika, and I think I'm killing the hell out of that name. This is a hockey weapon in the precision frame archetype present in the kinetic slot. This one shoots at 260 rounds per minute. Think of things like Swift Verdict, Lonesome, Enigma's Draw. We really don't have that many 260s. I know we have like Cryostesia, which I think many people know of. Being a hockey weapon means it also comes with hockey breach armaments. We also have combinations like One for All and Stats for All, which is obvious synergy. You also have Surrounded, which considering it's a sidearm, you'd be surprised how often you can proc Surrounded. Frenzy is also present on this weapon, as well as Gut Shot Straight, which we just talked about for our other sidearm, potentially giving you the ability to three crit one body. Now, I don't think that's possible with the adaptive archetype, but this is the precision archetype, which really only requires two crit and two body to reach that optimal time to kill 0.7 seconds. Could it do it in one crit three body? Possibly, which is kind of nuts, guys. We're talking like arguably one of the most forgiving sidearms in the game just due to Gut Shot Straight. Gonna have to check it out and see how that goes. Other good traits though on this weapon include multi-kill clip and moving targets. We also have Swashbuckler and Pugilist together, which is obvious synergy. And of course, you got things like Frenzy, Ambitious Assassin, a lot of great combinations. And for those wondering, what about that trait there, Slick Draw? Significantly increased handling, but significantly decreased target acquisition. That's just one of those we're just gonna have to wait. I don't really like perks that have negative side effects. They just never been my favorite. But this is one of those traits, like again, where we have to go, okay, how much is it really hurting us? And is it hurting us more depending on our input? Is that significant decrease in target acquisition more noticeable on controller than in this mouse and keyboard? Could it even be negligible on certain inputs? That's also a possibility. Either way it goes, we'll be testing this sidearm. Next, we have Blood Feud. This is another seasonal weapon, meaning it also can be crafted. And all of these perks can come with enhanced versions. Now, being one of the seasonal weapons, it also comes with right hook. This weapon is also a submachine gun present in the kinetic slots in that aggressive frame archetype. Now, what's beautiful about that is most SMG 
SMGs. Yeah, you're probably getting killed with an SMG, but a lot of times you're following up with the melee. So the obvious combination here that I'm looking at is of course Swashbuckler and Pugilist together. But if you're looking for this SMG just to stand on its own, Dynamic Sway in combination with Elemental Capacitor, that would be really good, especially on like a Void subclass or even an Arc subclass to increase that handling. Most of us are rocking Arc because of Arc 3.0. And when you combine that handling with its current handling stats, you're almost rocking max handling, meaning this weapon is gonna feel super fluid. Combine that with the likes of Dynamic Sway for that increase in accuracy as you hold down the trigger, should be very, very good. Other trade combinations that I'm gonna be going for inside of PvE, include Ambitious Assassin and Frenzy, Headstone and Triple Tap, and of course combinations like Grave Robber and Swashbuckler has some pretty obvious synergy as well. Encore is still not a favorite trade of mine, but again, the thing about Encore is precision kills grant range, and non-precision kills will consume those stacks and produce 30 stability and also improves accuracy. So I'm not like outright riding off Encore. It's just not a favorite trade of mine because of course it requires you to get stacks and kills in order to get that going. Will it work better on this SMG? Perhaps. And I'm willing to give it a try. Next we have Pizzicato. Sounds like pizza. This is a 900 round per minute SMG and it's a Soros SMG on top of that present in the kinetic slot. Now being a Soros weapon, it comes with the origin trait Soros Synergy. We're reloading, grants this weapon bonus handling and reduces incoming flinch for a short time. Now you can imagine how beneficial this is for an SMG considering flinch can be pretty abysmal, especially like side flinch on an SMG. So Soros Synergy should help combat that a bunch. The base stability on this weapon is also pretty good at 50. I only bring that up because stability of course helps you combat flinch on top of that. But the trade combinations for this thing actually look pretty juicy. One of them being Perpetual Motion Rangefinder. Now for PvP, that's pretty nice. We're talking this weapon's gonna have some reach, man. Base 20 meters. And that's like with half decent range stats. We're talking like upper range stat with like a range mass work. We're talking 22 and a half meters. This is actually a very well-rounded SMG, at least on paper. We might play with it and be like, yo, this is garbage. But on paper, it looks good. Now, Perpetual Motion seems like the obvious choice and I do love Perpetual Motion, but I am looking at Eye of the Storm because on an SMG, that is gonna be extremely beneficial. That kicks in, that's gonna literally take over your weapon and aim for you, increasing that accuracy and also simultaneously increasing that handling. Eye of the Storm Rangefinder may actually be the go-to option with like Perpetual Motion Multi-Kill Clip being the secondary option for me for trait combinations in PvP. Now the weapon also comes with Pugilist, but it doesn't really have the synergy that I saw with our other SMG when it comes to melee kills. So I don't know if I'm really gonna be using that. Inside of PvE though, you've got Multi-Kill Clip and Ambitious Assassin, which is pretty good. Osmosis is also present on this weapon. Demolitionist is also present here. There's a couple options, but again, not the strongest looking weapon for PvE. On top of that, its Jordan trait definitely seems more gauged at PvP, where flinch resistance is a really big deal. Next we have Amit AR2, or Amit AR2. It's one or the other. This is a precision frame auto rifle, and it's an Amalon weapon, meaning it comes with that Amalon fluid dynamic trait, where it states that the top half of your magazine has up to 20 stability and 30 reload speed. Now granted, this gets lower as the magazine gets lower, and then of course it disappears at 50%. Where this weapon looks to be shining the most, at least from what I'm seeing here on paper, is inside of PvE. You've got incandescent on this weapon. Yes, it does solar damage. Combine that with incandescent and solar 3.0. It's essentially Uriel's gift, but with the ability to cause solar explosions. And you can even do incandescent, ambitious assassin, or even triple tap, or even stats for all. And the beautiful thing about this weapon is that it's craftable, meaning enhanced incandescent. So those targets that you defeat spread an even longer lasting scorch to those nearby. I really want this weapon. And honestly, it only costs two deep sight breakdowns to get the weapon pattern for this. So it's easily achievable. Now inside of PVP, I'm already looking at that gut shot straight. All right, how much of an increase in body shot damage are we talking here on Amit? That in combination with dynamic sway could be pretty juicy. You also have tap the trigger. And of course there's enhanced versions of this. And again, gut shot straight, the enhanced version of that says that aiming out sights increases body shot damage, but decreases target acquisition just slightly. So just slightly. And it may be the play. Auto rifles, 450s, they have a decent time to kill 0.8 seconds. They have a little bit of forgiveness at six crits in one body, but let's be real, it could have more. Could we get to five crits, two body? Is that enough? Maybe, probably not, but we're still gonna try. Overall, I think the strong point for this auto rifle is its synergy with Solo 3.0. That enhanced incandescent is juicy enough to go after this weapon. Next, we have Yesteryear. This is an energy pulse rifle dropping from the Gambit playlist. And I know most of us don't want to play Gambit, but this one is worth going after. It comes with two different origin traits, one of which just got a buff, which is Gun and Run. Rapidly defeating targets with this weapon, grant bonus sprint speed. Guardians, powerful combatants, and high value targets grant this bonus quicker. It also comes with Soros Synergy, where reloading grants this weapon bonus handling and reduces incoming flinch for a short time. Now, the big standout trait on this weapon is, of course, Desperado. This is very unique because Desperado 
Colorado has only been on high impact pulses. However, this is a 390. This is an adaptive frame pulse rifle that can roll with Desperado, which sounds amazing. Desperado perpetual motion together, oh, or even like Desperado tunnel vision. You want to just lean into that reload. Suddenly you have crazy target acquisition with tunnel vision and your weapon is shooting substantially faster. It looks very juicy, guys. And again, Desperado is much better inside of PVE than what it used to be. It no longer drops damage like it used to. So don't overlook it inside of PVE. Now the weapon also comes with Repulsor Force where defeating void debuff targets grants an overshield. You also have golden tricorn present on it. That under over trait where you deal bonus damage to targets with overshields. Personally, I'm already like team Desperado. I just want to do like nothing but Desperado. Maybe like Desperado subsistence and just go crazy with it, right? Either way it goes, there is a lot of random rolls on this pulse rifle and pretty much with all gambit weapons. There's just so many different traits to go for. RNG will have to align perfectly for you to get that god roll, but if you got it, hey, let me know. And by let me know, I mean come by my Discord. We have a random roll portion of our Discord where people just post their god rolls all day long and pretty much just have people rate them. I would love to see your god roll. Next, we have Tarnished Metal. This is one of the seasonal weapons, meaning it is craftable. So all of these traits here have enhanced versions of them. Now, this is a lightweight frame energy scout rifle that deals arc damage. Perfect synergy here for arc 3.0. The big perk that you're going to want to get is Volt Shot. I've already played with this trait and it is fantastic. Reloading this weapon after defeating a target overcharges this weapon for a short period of time, causing it to jolt on its next hit. Now, you can imagine the synergy here that Volt Shot has with arc 3.0. Considering how many things benefit from jolt through our fragments and aspects. Guys, this is a very good trait. And for this arc scout rifle, I think it would be perfect here. Do like rapid hit and volt shot together. Constantly getting that increase in reload speed. Get a kill, reload, and suddenly you can jolt targets from afar. Very nice. Other trait combinations include explosive payload with rapid hit. And again, these enhanced versions of these weapons make them even nastier. Like enhanced explosive payload improves range. Enhanced volt shot has a longer duration in which you can cause a next target that you hit upon reloading to be jolted. But even if you look at things like PvP, things like enhanced moving target is really, really good, where you have increased movement speed and improved target acquisition while aiming down sights. That in combination with explosive payload, guys, this is a peppering machine. I know 200 round per minute sky rifles may not be your speed, but don't overlook them. 0.9 second time to kill value may not be the best, but what these weapons have to offer is A, being a lightweight frame, which just makes them much more smoother to handle, and B, they're pretty forgiving at three crits in one body. Like, not the most forgiving, Giving, but forgiving enough for a decent time to kill value. There's other trait combinations on here that look juicy, but those are the ones that I really want. Next, we have the return of one of our favorite weapons ever, Mindbender's Ambition. And for some reason, it has terrible reviews, like a 2.2 rating inside of Crucible and a 1.6 rating inside of PvE. What the hell, fellas? Does nobody like this weapon? Now, being a Nightfall weapon, there is going to be an adept version of it. It also comes with two origin traits, one being Stunning Recovery, and that's actually pretty good this season since we have champion mods for shotguns. Stunning a champion partially refills your magazine and triggers health regeneration, as well as improving recovery for a short duration. We also have Vanguard's Vindication, where final blows of this weapon grant a small amount of health. Now, Mindbenders has normally been a PvP weapon, and automatically I'm looking at a max range roll, or almost max range, with like full choke, snapshot, and incandescent. I know that sounds crazy, but yes, I like incandescent. Even inside a PvP, run into a group of enemies, cause an explosion, apply scorch, have easy cleanups. You see where we're going with this. Outside of that, you can do things like snapshot and steady hands, which is not bad either, especially if you're just fast swapping to other weapons. You also have combinations like pugilist and swashbuckler, which we talked about earlier. And if you don't have a one-two punch shotgun, this is fantastic. You can do slideways and one-two punch together, or even things like one-two punch and auto-loading holster. Fragile focus is a more difficult trait to proc on a shotgun, unless you're taking advantage of things like invis. You're just going to take damage when closing the gap, guys. And as far as your mag perk goes, I like assault mag a lot. Acarize rounds is also really, really good. One hit kill range for shotguns is a finicky thing. On top of that, shotguns are going to get adjusted at some point in the season, or I think it's like the beginning of next season. So they're going to change even more in terms of their target acquisition. Now, before I crucify Mindbender's ambition, I have to try it. I know a lot of people are like, yo, this weapon is a hollow shell of its former self. Hold up. Let's just try it. Okay. Let's try it once. And if it's ass, it's ass. Believe me, I'll tell you if it's ass. Next, we have the Inquisitor. This is an arc energy shotgun that drops from Trials of Osiris. This is a beautiful weapon. It's also a slug shotgun. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this shotgun is gonna be one of the best in the game. Primarily because it is a trials weapon. It comes with perks like Alacrity, but that target acquisition is gonna be noticeable on this slug, meaning it's gonna snag some crazy crit shots and one hit kills. Combine that with the likes of opening shots, which is also present on this weapon, and things like steady hands or even perpetual motion. Fellas, this thing is gonna be nasty. And that's honestly the trade I'm gonna be going for the most because most slug shotguns, you're gonna wanna go for that 
crit shot. You want that one hit kill. Opening shot, substantially increasing that accuracy. Alacrity when procs, substantially increases both range and aim assist. Now you do run into a situation where opening shot actually starts to bump you into the cap, the range cap of this gun. And so you start to ask yourself, okay, is this really that beneficial? Well, you do get the increase in aim assist, which is nice, as well as the reduction there in that accuracy cone size. So even if you do run into the cap when it comes to your range, I think it's still going to be a go-to trait for those other benefits. What this may require you to do is instead of rocking accurate rounds for your mag perk, you may want to go assault mag for that increase in rate of fire. Again, you're already getting close to that range cap as it is. A single barrel perk and you're there. And you may not want to overcompensate for things like full bore, even hammer forge rifling, and maybe rock something like small bore, or even a barrel perk that boosts handling. Regardless, this shotgun is looking pretty potent. Now inside of PVE, you have golden tricorn on this weapon, which is an interesting one because I don't think we have any slug shotguns with golden tricorn. But golden tricorn states that you get a 15% increase in damage for seven seconds and it can be refreshed with a weapon kill. But matching grenade or power melee kills to your subclass will grant you a whopping 50% damage buff for 10 seconds. And it simply is refreshed by getting another matching ability kill. The beautiful thing about this is that this is an arc weapon. And we have so many arc builds this season that take advantage of both your melee and your grenades. We literally just put out our Lord of Thunder build just yesterday. That combination, golden tricorn, and say demolitionist is a deadly combo. Literally feeding into each other. And so easy to proc. So again, I know this is a PvP weapon considering it's a Trials of Osiris weapon, but lots of beautiful synergy here for PvE. Next, we have Brigand's Law. I've actually been playing with this sidearm, and guys, this thing performs beautifully. It's an energy sidearm that deals arc damage. It's in the rapid fire frame archetype, meaning it shoots in full auto, has deeper ammo reserves, also has slightly faster reload when the mag is empty. And this weapon also comes with that new trait, Volt Shot, which is exactly what I have on mine, which synergizes greatly with Arc 3.0. Now, being the seasonal weapon, you can, of course, get enhanced versions of this, so you can get enhanced Volt Shots. But let's take a look real quick at Right Hook. Dealing melee damage gives this weapon increased target acquisition and range for a short period of time. Again, like earlier, the idea of Rock and Pugilist with Swashbuckler with Right Hook is very intriguing to me. And we talk about the enhanced version of these traits. Enhanced Pugilist says that final blows of this weapon generate improved melee energy on top of the handling buff that you get when dealing melee damage. And of course, Swashbuckler in its enhanced form says that the weapon gains increased damage for an improved duration from melee final blows. So it lasts even longer. Combine that with Right Hook and we're cooking, baby. Outside of that, some other traits that are intriguing me is, of course, Adagio. I don't ever want to overlook it. Definitely want to give that one a try. You also have Range Finder and Perpetual Motion. But hands down, I think Volt Shot and say Volt Shot and Feeding Frenzy is going to be the combination I'm going to be leaning into, at least for PvE. And maybe even see how it performs in PvP. Regardless though, guys, this is a very good sidearm. You will love how it performs. It's just so much fun to shoot. And that's just like some of the weapons inside of Destiny. Some weapons are just a hell of a lot of fun to just shoot. This is one of those. Next, we have Out of Bounce. This is an Arc Energy submachine gun. Now, this is an Amelon SMG, which in the past I've been a big fan of. Amelon Fluid Dynamics is really nice here, though, as it grants that increase in stability and reload speed on the top half of that mag. But this weapon is a 900 round per minute lightweight, not adaptive, and it has a ton of traits. Like a ton, dude. But you have combinations like Tunnel Vision and Kill Clip, Dynamic Sway Tap the Trigger, Gut Shot Straight is also present on this weapon, Moving Target is also present on it. Combine that with the likes of Kill Clip, or even go crazy and go Moving Target Tap Trigger. Range Finder is also present on this one. And I will say this, this weapon doesn't have the best range. So even though I love these other trade combinations, you may want to use Range Finder. It would tack on like an extra meter and a half. And on the high end of range for this SMG, you can, with Range Finder, reach up to 21 meters. And you may even want to do like a Range Finder Dynamic Sway or a Range Finder Moving Target Roll with this weapon. Now for PvE, you do have Golden Tricorn. And you can even do things like Golden Tricorn and Grave Robber together if you're rocking like a melee based build. However, I do like Golden Tricorn with Demolitionist the most, especially with Arc 3.0. Next, we have Cry Muni. This weapon, along with a lot of other grenade launchers, is disabled. I love the look of this one, though. It's just like a straight-up cannon. But this is one of the core playlist weapons that you can get from literally just grinding the core playlist. It comes with three different origin traits, Vanguard Vindication, One Quiet Moment, and Gun and Run. Now, its trait combinations include Incandescent, Demolitionist, Swashbuckler, and Vorpal. Honestly, it doesn't look half bad. You've got Incandescent, which obviously synergizes great with Solo 3.0, and it does great for Ag Clear, and you've got Vorpal for that increase in damage against bosses and mini bosses. The problem is that's only a 10% buff. When it comes to grenade launchers, I have to see how it's going to shake out once Bungie fixes them. Many of them are still disabled, and so it's hard for me to make a judgment on this one, but we will be making a review of it at some point. Next, we have the Cell Spy Pitch Glass. This is a linear fusion rifle that deals arc damage. Now, it doesn't look like a bad linear. It has some potential here. It's got Volt Shot 
not present on it. Clown Cartridge and Vorpal. Frenzy is also present on it. But I think most people that are wanting to go for a linear fusion rifle, they want damage. They just want outright raw DPS damage. And I get that. I do. And even though this is going to have an enhanced version with enhanced traits, considering it's a craftable weapon, and I'm very much excited to try it out, I think overall, the next linear fusion rifle is the current king, and that is Taypan. Taypan, guys, is a void linear fusion rifle, and it too is craftable, and it has everything. Firing line with triple tap. Guys, this linear fusion rifle carried me through the King's Fall Raid. Its ability to regenerate ammo with triple tap out of thin air and having an enhanced version of these two traits allows for more forgiveness in between those shots. And firing line is so easy to proc, especially in things like GMs and raids. You're going to be close to your teammates. But arguably the biggest benefit to this weapon is just being a vice stinger linear. This is exactly what makes things like Reed's Regret so good. Damaging an enemy with this weapon has a small chance to reload the magazine and increase movement speed while aiming down sights. This right here can completely auto reload your weapon because with triple tap, you're tacking on an extra shot every three precision shots. This is giving you a chance every single time to potentially auto reload the entire weapon. This is such a good origin trait. It's so good. I'm scared Bungie's going to nerf it. I know guys, I don't even like acknowledging what I just said, but that combination is the go-to combination and it has surpassed Reed's Regret for me. It has surpassed Storm Chaser for me. This to me is the best linear fusion rifle in the game, both for total damage and DPS. I've got one with a charge mass work, enhanced battery, enhanced triple tap, and enhanced firing line. And guys, it puts in work. Next, we have Plank's Stride. This is an arc machine gun present in the rapid fire frame archetype. And it also has that right hook origin trait. Now, machine guns got love here recently. And this is also a craftable role as well. So you can get enhanced perks on top of that. I don't really know how often I'm going to be meleeing while holding my machine gun, but you can rock that grave robber swashbuckler role with, of course, that right hook origin trait. Traits. Other combinations though include tap the trigger and perpetual motion inside of PvP. One for all. Mulligan inside of PvE. Look man, it's a rapid fire frame. You're gonna miss shots. I do it all the time. These are bullet hoses. Mulligan will help you. And again, enhanced Mulligan has an improved chance to return ammo to the Mac. And enhanced one for all allows for that trait to have an improved duration. Now next weapon is Roar of the Bear. This is the Iron Banner Rocket Launcher. It's a high impact rocket. Again, has the updated Skulking Wolf Origin traits. And it does solar damage. And Bungie has also given us incandescent on this one, which seems really, really good, man. Incandescent, Demolitionist together. Or you can even go with like Ambitious Assassin, Incandescent together. For DPS though, or just outright sheer damage. Lasting Impression, Demolitionist is always a really good one. You may even want tracking on it. And for total damage, you can do things like Fill Prep and Lasting Impressions as well. The question that I have, Chain Reaction versus Incandescent. Chain Reaction causes an elemental damage explosion, whereas you got Incandescent, which does cause like an explosion, but with Scorch. I would say that for any other class, Chain Reaction is the way to go. But when you're rocking Solar 3.0, definitely incandescent. So guys, those are our seasonal roles for the raid weapons, the trial weapons, core playlist weapons, etc. Now we're going to move over to the Dares of Eternity weapons, most notably the BXR Battler. Now this weapon has some new traits on it and it is craftable. By the way, if you want to check out our guide on Dares of Eternity weapons, we recently put out a video on how to optimize and obtain deep sight versions of these guns. Now I'm going to kind of just show you a brief overview of these weapon roles. But things like Blunt Execution Rounds on BXR, always a great one, especially for that fantasy from Halo. Perpetual Motion is also really, really good. And again, all of these weapons come with the Hot Swap Origin traits. We're switching this weapon while you're damaged, strongly increases its handling for a short duration. And again, this is any damage that you take. Just the smallest little damage results in this weapon having increased handling. Kill Clip Perpetual Motion, especially the enhanced version of these traits, is probably going to be the go-to choice for me. Next, we have Pardon Our Dust. You will be able to craft this weapon as well. Things like Ambitious assassin, spike grenades, or even blinding grenades on it. Vorpal is also present as well as Rampage. This is actually a very good grenade launcher inside of PvE. And even if you want to just run it with auto-loading holster, blinding grenades, and whatever final trait there in that column, the point is, is you're going to have a kinetic GL that can blind enemies inside of PvE. Next, we have the Wastelander. This is a lightweight shotgun present in the kinetic slots, and it's actually a really good shotgun. I like this shotty a lot. You're going to have enhanced rolls on this one as it's also craftable. So think like slide shot and opening shot. If we get the enhanced version of these even better. One two punch is also present on the shotgun. And what's interesting here is like pugilist and one two punch together. One two punch increasing that melee damage. Pugilist taking advantage when you land final blows or hits with your melee, which improves the weapon's handling. It's already a lightweight frame, so it's already going to feel very, very fluid, but this is going to make it even better. And again, one two punch enhance requires less pellets to land in order to get that melee damage bump. Next, we have retrace path. This is a legendary energy trace rifle. It too is craftable. And yes, I am already
already eyeballing that enhanced incandescence. But we can, of course, rock things like enhanced tricorn, which would synergize very nicely with Solar 3.0. Combine that with subsistence, and you can just lay on the trigger. Now, our two final weapons is half truce and the other half. Both of these weapons are craftable. Eager's Edge is a fantastic trait that's present on both of them. Half truce actually comes with chain reaction, which is pretty nice. And if we can get enhanced chain reaction, this improves those ammo reserves. And the other half can roll things like enhanced repulsor brace, which states that defeating a void debuff target grants an overshield that lasts for an improved duration. I'm very curious about all of these guys, so be looking out for those. Guys, if you liked today's video, a like is very much appreciated. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. We cover everything in this game and we individually review pretty much all these weapons or eventually get around to reviewing the hot ones and then moving down to the rest of them. But with all things sandbox related, every one of these weapons will have at least a brief moment to be meta. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.